Hi, everyone, and welcome to Adobe Live. My name is Anna McNaught, and I will be your host today. And today I am joined for day two with Sasha Vinogradova. Sasha, how are you doing today? Welcome to Adobe again. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm super happy to be here. I'm especially super happy to be here because we are improvising today. Yes. And uh, you guys actually will be deciding what we're doing. So we need themes. We really need themes, what you want to come, what you want to see. Um, I um, suggested, just sort of slightly, uh, something in more surreal theme, you know, like... Yes, you uh, know I love that. Yes. <laughs> uh, so, um, it's first time for me, usually I, I come like with a, hey, here's an artwork we're doing, but this is a little different. So, please... Mm -hmm. Tell us. Yes. <laughs> yes, I'm super excited and welcome everyone into the chat. Hey, Sam, Paul, Carol, Marsha. So nice to see you all here with us today. And today is going to be an extra special time because as Sasha said, we are going to be improvising. And so it's all about that chat interaction today. So I want to hear you all in the chat. I want to see you, whether you're on YouTube or Behance, be sure to come into the chat and let us know your ideas so that we can create something absolutely epic that is going to be a really cool collaboration of us and everyone uh, who's tuning in today. So also just a reminder to start your day with the Photoshop Creative Challenge hosted by Paul Tranny every weekday this week at 9 a.m. Pacific time. Tune in and challenge yourself with a new prompt each and every day. And it looks like Paul has been ending on time as well. We know that's a big skill for him to master and uh, also some really good time in Photoshop to learn some new skills and brush up on those things that you might already know. So Sasha, uh, I am super excited. Yesterday was really fun. The piece you made was absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I know the chat really loved it. And uh, so I think today is going to be a challenge, but also, um, I mean, anything you create is stunning. So I think we'll be good. So I already see some themes. It's really funny. Uh, I like sandwiches the most. I wish we were making sandwiches. Yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, I see stone. But um, when somebody touches it, uh, one uh, gets into another world. That's cool. Paul suggests in fantasy book cover from 60s, something with gr some grain. Um, nice. This is super cool. Uh, a giant egg. Why do I want to make a giant egg? <laughs> like, I'm, I'm seeing, like, something, yeah, coming out from a giant egg. I think it's great. Um, so let's go and do something surreal. I'm going to bring my, um, um, so my Adobe stock. Um, maybe we can power through multiple themes. We'll see how it sure. goes. So, uh, guys, we are here, we see in the chat, so, um, keep suggesting stuff I, I keep, what do you think about like I I, I think uh, giant tag is a cool idea something coming out from a big crack tag and there's maybe some person some you know birds yes. flowers um, we also before um, the before um, stream started we uh, were discussing with Anna like I really liked um, this Put a shoot here and i was like hey maybe we can add something to this like shot um like i don't know either fish or flowers or something so if you have some ideas please let us know um but what Ooh. do you think what do you yeah. think anna Looks like we got some good stuff coming in. Uh, definitely surreal, um, ocean falling down to sky, uh, a garden with the with all the things, forbidden fruit, and then someone said a dragon egg. I mean, Ooh. that's very much right up your alley. I feel like we could make something cool with that. But yeah, I, I love this too. I think, I don't know, maybe we take on a couple different prompts. Yeah, I think uh, let's... Uh... Let's do a couple little different things. Um, okay, so this will be lots of uh, searches. <laughs> <laughs> As I said, so much of uh, making a good comp about um, 
you know, um, combining photos which are um, looking right, like the lighting is right. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm still debating, like, um, oh, ocean, sky, both. Um, hmm. Yeah, I'm still, still debating, uh, sh should I go with giant cracked egg and something coming out from it? Or should I come something in here? Let's, I know. Let's let's go let, let's go with egg, and then we will go with something else. Like cool. uh, so, cool. keep keep in mind your ideas. These are um, all so good. I like CJ said giant dragon egg being held up by Atlas statue. That's really cool. And you know what's so funny about this? Last night, I, as I was falling asleep, this is always when my ideas come to me. I was thinking about an egg cracked open with something coming out of it, and I was thinking about fish, and like it's so so bizarre that it's all coming up today too so this is yeah yeah this is <laughs> this is super cool and um uh, also often before um i uh start riffing on stuff um sometimes uh, pinterest is a good thing to go yes. to get some inspiration so um Oh, planted plant surrounded with some octopus. Oh yeah. Paul said the image can also inspire you as well. That's so true. true I feel true, like that true. always happens. Yeah. And you know, Paul does it all the time. I already see like some cool stuff. Um, as you can see, when I went to search for the, um, uh, for my, uh, stock photos, um, I added photos to my search rather than illustrations. I, looking for something photo real uh photorealistic um and um i'm i like what i'm seeing but i usually like when the light is a little bit more dramatic like right now everything is very um everything i'm seeing is very um sort of you know this very bright light um i like something like when one side um, is more dramatic than another. And yeah. uh, I'm looking at cl some nice close up of the um, broken egg. Ooh, look at this. Oh, this is premium. Let's turn on standard content. Oh, that always throws me off. Oh, I'm like, so no. <laughs> <laughs> but, hey, that was a good idea, actually. Um, um, that was a good idea that this, um, it's a mac macro shot. Like I'm actually like, okay, I'm already seeing it. I want a little fairy cracking, uh, coming out from the egg and it's a fairy forest because, you know, I love stuff like this. Yes. Um, but we, oh going... wait, hang on. All right, we are back. I thought I did something because so I was clicking around, and no, <laughs> I didn't I, even I, realize that. I, I got uh, I got too excited and uh, I guess <laughs> closed something. Sorry about it. But yeah, I already kind of um, I'm getting there. I know approximately what I want, uh, and as Paul mentioned, um, uh, the photos itself brought lots of inspiration. So. Um, yeah we're going i hope make more than one piece so keep thinking about what uh we want to do but yeah for now i'm looking for like a good shot of the um um cracked egg with a very particular lighting and um actually i'm going to add dark we have so many good suggestions coming in <laughs> what uh what are your thoughts <laughs> i think we're still going with the f something to do with the egg uh elizabeth said what if the fairy was cracking the egg to let the baby dragon out 
That sounds Ooh. like a hard edit. I like it though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I need this chat all the time when I'm trying to plan ideas because I know is this is perfect for helpful. Yeah. I know this part is uh, a little, um, it's just so important to find a correct image and um, that's what we're doing. I need like not an angle from above, I need angle from the side um, and at some point I'll add extra search words when I run out out of uh... okay I'm going to close this because we already have better ideas oh I still love that shot so much yeah uh, also I use this find similar a lot it's really cool yeah I love using that as well it's always so helpful So many good ideas. The eggshell could be the earth or a planet, giant egg inside a vast world, spider <laughs> coming out of egg. Ooh, this is so fish cool. Fish coming out of egg. <laughs> oh, I, I love gonna, it all. I'm going to like just be swimming with ideas later. No pun intended. <laughs> okay. Hello, Francisco. Yes, to answer your question about whether we are going to be getting into um, shadows, highlights, color grading. I am sure Sasha will get into that once uh, she composites everything together, and then we'll get into the details of how uh, different tools within Photoshop work and how to finalize your image. So thank you for asking. Yep. Thank you. Um, okay. So at this point, I'll start bringing some photos in. Um, I usually um, just grab a whole bunch of um, images uh, and um, I have them somewhere on my, oh my God, I should close this one because this is so good. I wish I could use this. I know. Let's find similar and uh, let's make sure. Wow, it's it was $500 for that image. I know, I mean, it's a good <laughs> one for sure, but let's make sure we are using, do you see the standard content in here? Um, and I need only photos. No, I, I guess. Yeah, it seems like they're all, all premium. Oh, I'm so mad. So mad. Ah, uh, that one was so cool. No. Hmm. Yeah, dark grass. Like nothing is quite the same. No. I I mean that's <laughs> why that's why we use Photoshop. We will uh we will comp some stuff in. Yeah. Marsha so, said we need five hundred dollars stat. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I honestly am like, hmm, is this worth it? Should I buy this image? How yeah. much money can I make from this image? <laughs> Um, okay, so we already grabbed this one. And there was another one somewhere. Like, I like this one because um, I like that there is another side of the egg. Um, cool. Sorry. Okay, so we have an idea. Um, this is like, I, I like this photo. Um, I like that uh, there is a lighting I'm searching for where like one side is stronger lead than another. And uh, let's figure out the um, subject and then um, surrounding. So I, um, oh, this is good.
so this I need to see the entire series and uh, all those marker shots of those little shoots are super cool. Um, hopefully we can use that too. Um, I want to see the entire series. And in series, I want to add for egg, so it's only in the series. Okay. I'd like to know from you, Sasha, and in the chat, how long does everyone spend normally looking for stock images? Yes, I'm curious. <laughs> I'm curious about that too. I feel like I have spent probably upwards of an hour, two hours, maybe just getting lost and continuing to click like, see similar, see similar, see similar. <laughs> Ooh, I love the mushrooms. <laughs> Let's grab them. So that's the cool part. We can grab so many things. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. I'm going with such a girly theme. I just can't help myself. <laughs> I think it's awesome. Oh, it's going to be great. Oh, this is giving me so many ideas too. I'm literally like itching to start something. <laughs> <laughs> That's the goal. That's the goal. If like after this, uh, you guys want to just go and make stuff. That's mission yes, accomplished. Exactly. Yeah, Bradley said with 7,000 tabs open. Exactly. Oh, this is, <laughs> this, is, this is not many. Come on. This is like not even serious. Oh, and then I always end up getting other ideas as I'm going along too and end up with like 10 different Photoshop canvases of all these different ideas that I've started. <laughs> yeah. So um, again, we are looking for the lighting. So uh, see, I'm trying to bring photos which are um, like lit from one side. Um, oh my, like every time I see something like this, I know it maybe looks not like nothing fancy, but I see so much potential. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> those, are, those are really cool. Um. And I probably should be doing this on the screen because you guys have no idea what's happening otherwise. I definitely have used this model before. I think she was doing stuff on Deviant Art for a while and now it looks like has a whole collection on Adobe stock. That's cool. Yeah. So at this point, I'm just looking at the right pose. So many good ones. Yep. Hello, Rick. Welcome in. For anyone just joining us. We are fully working with the chat today to bring all of these different ideas into Sasha's composite. And so right now we're just gathering images, but for anyone just joining us, um, let us know if you have any ideas for this piece. Okay, I, so cool. yeah. I, um... So I'm going to work in a kind of weird format. Um, I like that it's a little bit more vertical, but um, it's also can be used in Instagram. Um, uh, two, two, seven, <clears throat> zero. So this format. And um, I know I... Actually, this is this is good. Like we will search for most close up later. Like um, I maybe like mushrooms at the moment. They're super cool, but I'm also just going to use them as uh, um, as my 
um, foreground. I always start like comping with the uh, um, very rough, sort of just bringing a bunch of things together. Um, Holly asked what your size format is for this. My size is this. Okay. And I just did an awful, awful thing. I started bringing photos in um, with just this copy and paste. And um, it means my numbers are all, um, like, I, I don't have the file names, which is mm. unfortunate. I like, uh, I'm going to bring it. I like this shot. I think I'll start with this shot or this shot. Yeah, so I, you... I think I like this one because she's sitting in this guy in, in this shot. So I'm, I'll start already with uh, licenses licensing it. Cool. Um, in your first canvas that you had there, is that kind of I know I've seen you work before where you kind of will have a mood board or a bunch of images that you like and then pull from that. Was that what you were doing there? Um, yes, this is sort of my um, everything, um, cool. and this is my more cleaner um cleaner search oh so many like you know like i see a pose like this I'm like oh i can actually add some interaction to uh to, to the future pose or should i just go th with this one because it's more moodier i'll go with moodier <laughs> so I give up on um, searching um, for this image, so I'm just putting numbers in. A question for you from YouTube. Are there any rules to compositing? I'm finding it difficult to composite. Lighting, 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 lighting. So um, just uh, um, um, as I keep saying, over and over again, um, it's just, um, if you find uh, photos which are similar in lighting, um, everything else will come together. So that's that's the rule. Yes. Okay, so we're going to bring this little lady in. Already licensed. And I'm almost like I can I can make her like sitting inside the eggshell or besides the eggshell, and uh, beside will be fine. But I don't know. We'll see. So many good options. Yeah, and egg has to be probably some something a little bit more special too because it's a fairy egg. Yeah. Maybe it has to be like pink or something. <laughs> that's that's you, Anna's you, world. You, 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 you are talking my language here. Uh, so I'm going to use this photo for now just to um, start building my scene. I'm uh, I this is this is just for the purposes of uh, uh, blocking. Um, so it's nothing. I'm not doing anything. Uh, like clean uh, and I might not, not even use this photo in the future but but just for now I need some space and I'm going to do that so I'm, I'm, I'm removing mushrooms because they might be a little um, distracting for now and I know there are watermarks ignore it I just need this um, uh, canvas And also, like, uh, again, this is just for the purposes of um, compositing. Um, like, you want some more interesting terrain. You don't, uh, like, this is a little too flat right now. There's nothing going on. Um, but we will fix it.
And like, I love, love, love this photo here, but you see lighting, again, lighting does not perfectly matches. This is more front lighting, um, but because it's very soft, I think on this one, we actually can um, uh, just shift it a little bit and mimic it a little bit. And, you know, shape of the egg is so simple that it's not a problem. Um, so sometimes it's okay to find photos which do not match and um, then we will make it match. And just again, for the purposes of just um, <clears throat> um, blocking, I'm going to uh, make a rough selection, not going to go crazy. Um, so I wasn't happy with that. I'm going to use some black mask. So when you're talking about blocking, you're just kind of referring to like roughing out your composition and getting everything in place. And then you go back and clean, clean it yeah. all up and yeah. license. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, clean it up, license, uh, you know, uh, doing, make sure that all the, um, all the, uh, masking is looking good. Um, uh, but just for the sake of composition, figuring out what I'm doing, um, like this works like totally fine cool probably we'll do some other wings too uh, later this was a solid brush i need solid brush i need Harder brush. Okay, this is uh, just fine for the for the uh, for the blocking. So cool to already see it kind of coming together. Yeah, and just see the... how it's how it's coming together just because lighting matches. Yep. As, soon, as soon as we have lighting which matches, it's just so easy. Um, I really like this egg photo, but obviously there are too many eggshells, so we would have to remedy it. Again, just blocking. And, um, you want to see some insights. Mm. So I'm going to grab this part in here. That's cool. Oh, not, not the right. Um, and uh, one thing, um, again, like we have to think about composition, like as you can see at the objects right now, it's not looking good because we don't have a center of composition, objects are fighting for the space. So we need something bigger, something smaller. We need some interest on the background, but it has to be also out of focus. So things to kind of think and consider. Okay, so I, I want this app to be pretty big. She's sitting next to it, all sad. And um, <laughs> on the background, we will add some um, some cool mushrooms, I guess, because it's we already have mushrooms, and we, we would have to just you know license three photos and uh, call it a day. Yes. Um, so, and I. I'm, I'm telling you, like, uh, we can play with this image for quite some time um, or we can create more images if you guys still have some something you strongly want to see. Yeah, let us know in the chat if you all want Sasha to keep working on this one and perfect it or if we should kind of maybe just get everything roughly in place and make Maybe what we could do oh, is we, could... we for sure will get it into a good place. Cool. And just cool. like, 
we can like keep building more elements to it or we can just uh, move on on the next subject but we, we definitely will get it to a place where it's a uh, finished awesome sort of. yeah yeah i think it would be cool to do a couple different styles totally um you see one thing i'm trying to figure out right now is uh my um composition because again if you just have three mushrooms like this i guess it's fine but it's just like it must not compete with the main image and i just want a little bit like I, i'll go and uh, explore um the the images of the moss and i also want to have some um uh, grass on the foreground where uh, it's going to be like sort of mm. like this and it's going to be out of focus and it will frame our little scene nicely so we're almost like looking into this uh, miniature world i love that idea um also elizabeth said maybe flip uh the egg so her wings aren't at the same orientation as the egg shells and set her inside the shell see like i can't really flip the egg because lighting lighting light and lighting um we we have lighting coming from uh from this side mm, yes and um um, but we, we, we might look into other photos of the wings, so um, we will find we will find some options for that. Um, for now, I want to find. I actually will start with uh, licensing some stuff already because I for sure know that I, I want this egg here, and again because I didn't save my um, um, numbers. Um, I'm just putting it into um, my search. 42, 66, 49, 39, 3. Um, Sam asked if you ever sketch out compositional ideas or do you always figure it out in Photoshop first? Hmm. Depends. Um, so, um, it, <laughs> what, what, what comes first? <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> the sketch or the egg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, when I work with uh, 3D images, I um, often um, do start with sketch because I have full control over what to depict. With photos, I um, often kind of have to dance from there because I can't change the angle or the lighting much. Um, but it also depends. Like if, for example, um, I don't know what I do, like it, I, I don't know what I'm exactly what I'm working on, I probably will start from like that. Like that's the process you just saw. Um, but if, for example, I'm working on the um, on the uh, book cover, um, I'll start from sketch. I'll start mm -hmm. from sketch and then I find photos which I might work. So it depends on the process, really. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that too. And sometimes I feel like if I have a really clear idea in my head, then that's always a good sketch time. But many times I work exactly how you're working right now. Yeah, it's so... Uh, there is no uh, right or wrong, I feel like. Uh, it's whatever works. And we're going to do some boring stuff. <laughs> so I'll have you talk about, um, I don't know, a cool experience that you've had within your work field. I know yesterday you've talked about um, the clients that you've worked with, the jobs that you've had. Maybe you can share like a really amazing experience that you had. Oh, um, I mean, like every, uh, there are just so many. Um, I feel very lucky to do what I do. And uh, I feel, uh, I feel like art in general is such a fulfilling job, um, but um one like 
I, I have many funny stories, but like, for example, one cool thing, um, uh, when I uh, was working at the mill, and at the moment we had um, HP uh, client uh, with their um, notebook for artists. And the uh, concept of that spot was uh, bringing, like they, they wanted to feature a couple artists um, in that advertising spot. Um, so they were looking for artists and uh, they're like we're looking on their own side uh, but my creative uh, director at the time was like hey they also open um like to our stuff like it will be judged the same way like anyone else if you want to submit your work please do um so i did submit my work and uh they liked it and uh i actually been featured in uh hp advertising spot no way <laughs> yeah i went to like uh i went to uh like a photo shoot the like, whole makeup and director was like and now you walk there and now you pretend pretend that you're painting and uh oh that's so cool yeah it was really fun uh i'll try to find it and show it to you guys yeah when did that come out um See, see, ah. Oh. <laughs> oh my God, that's awesome. That yeah. is so cool. Uh, that was a couple years ago, I think. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, that was completely random. Um, yeah. Wow. <laughs> I love things like that when it kind of all comes together and like happens so naturally too. Yeah. Um, I totally didn't expect that they would pick me and, uh, they did. And, uh, uh, it was a cool, cool day to be on the shoot. Yeah. Because I'm, I, I've been on the shoot many times, but like every time from the, from the other side, you know, from the, um, from the production side. Right. That, that was special. Yeah, it's, it's always fun when you get to kind of be treated like a princess on set, have your hair and makeup done and <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> get to be the subject for the day. <laughs> so, so random, so weird. Also nerve wracking, though I didn't have to do anything as, you know, just. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> um, okay, we're getting there. So I'm going to remove this guy in here and you see like, this is cool thing. I'll put eggshell in front of her so it's more incorporated in the, into the scene. Um, and um, let's go and find some good backgrounds. So, yeah. Moss. Pull this up. This is just, you know, my bread and butter. Um, <laughs> um, again, uh, at some point, uh, I made a, a short film um, with my very awesome friend, Wusan. Um, and it's always um, moss and forest related. So we're going to watch it because, you know, yes. <laughs> why not? Uh, so I, I I I saw so many like scenes and references of the moss, and so obviously 3D a little different, uh, but yeah, very familiar with that palette. Oh, <laughs> I love this. I I think I don't know if you're working on it when we met, but I remember seeing you showed me these little guys, and they're so cool. Little squishy squishies. Yeah, th this was so much work. This is just like it, one minute long, but it yeah. takes time. Animation takes time. And, uh, you know, like, um, what would not be able to do that without Usa and some other people who, like, helped me. Uh, I had to, like, be like, hey, can you, can, can you figure out, like, how to make this little thing? And it was so. Yeah. Ah, oh, that yeah. is absolutely unbelievable. I, I can't even imagine how 
how long that would have taken. And you should also, if you haven't already submit that to tons of little short videos. Oh, I, 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 already, I already did. We already had our festival run. Um, oh, wow. I, yes. Um, I actually like one super sad story. Um, I um, submitted a bunch of festivals and uh, um, one um, one of the festivals was Monstra in Portugal. I was like, oh my God, I'm going to go to Portugal. It will be uh, like, you know, for, for the short I made, I, I was going with the people we've worked with. So I was like, this is cool. This is awesome. Yeah. Uh, and, ooh, look at this. Ooh. Yep. And then, and then COVID started and, uh. <laughs> and we couldn't go and everything was booked and it was seriously like 15, <laughs> days before our trip was so sad so oh sad. that is so so upsetting and did they still have the festival anyways and they did oh, that's the worst i'm so sorry uh, no 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 they they had um they had it in online format so it's not like okay. i missed anything but um it was said that um you know i couldn't make it yeah so that was cool, but no, I'm not yeah. going to use it because lighting is not mm. perfect. And uh, I actually uh, liked the interaction, the floor. Uh, like I, I like seeing this and uh, that would cover everything. Mm. So I'm not going to do that. Um, Priyanka is asking how long it took you to complete the animation project. It seriously took like a year, um, obviously outside of other projects and full-time job, but it was so much time. Like I had to be, um, I had to, um, I had to like figure out the um, time for, for it. I had to like, you know, seriously write down in like i started to have i started diary but it wasn't like a thought diary it was just a um a goal for the day diary mm. because otherwise i was not able to um make it happen it just was like finding time it, it was so tough yeah i don't want to go through that process again M maybe like Maybe I would, but um, it would have to be with the right group of people and um, with not with the combining with a full time job. Yeah. Yeah. It really gives you an appreciation for long movie animations or like I, I love love death and robots. And every time I see those, I'm just like, oh, my God, how and how I long know, did I these know. take? I know. Um, you know, actually, I'm, I, I feel like I'm just an, an old person. I'm like, I remember a story. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. I love it. Keep it coming. <laughs> but uh, one of the, uh, like, actually recently uh, was really cool. Um, I uh, got this email uh, saying, Hey, do you want to uh, come and see premiere of Death Love Robots uh, season three here in LA with uh, David Fincher's Q and A? Oh wow! I was like, what? Obviously, I do, but like, how? What? How? How did you even find me? What's happening? Like, I will find your Instagram, uh, and I was like, I am an influencer now. <laughs> I get free stuff from yes. Instagram. <laughs> yes. And that is the best feeling. It's so fun. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, um, I had a chance to go see that. Um, it was a draft Alma house here in uh, um, LA. And uh, David Fincher is the sweetest dude ever. You would Really? Yes, you would think with all his dark, dark, um, you know, 
movies. Uh, yeah. He, he would have dark personality and he was hilarious and adorable. And I was like, this is, I'm, I'm, I'm having like some, like, it's weird. But uh, I enjoyed it very much. That's so cool. What a great experience. Yeah. Um, so I just licensed the mushroom stuff. I decided not to fight it. It just works. So let's go with it. Cool. Um, someone asked, let's see, a little further back. What are the little cuties from the animation called? Do they have a name? No, they don't. <laughs> so if you have a name for them, please yeah. let me know. <laughs> yeah, come up. Let's come up with a name for the little squishies. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. I this is actually so satisfying when you're done with the um, like when I, I I when you jump from low res images into like licensed high res stuff. You're like, oh, this is so satisfying. Yeah. I know it always feels so good. Marsha said tubby tots. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so cute. Good job, Marsha. Yes. <laughs> and again, we're doing what we already did done before we're removing um, mushrooms so we can place them separately when where we need them um, it's just the same process just cleaner and uh, you see I'm going to remove mushrooms with whatever this tool is I'm just uh, need to create this separation um, because it it works kind of funny if if it has the separation, it just, it looks great. But if you do not, it kind of bleeds one object into another and it looks kind of funny. Yeah. So I'm, I'm creating those like bridges for a um, tool to know what to do with, with that. I can't tell if those mushrooms are real. They almost look fake. I think they're fake. Like, I think it's like, oh. I don't know. It's like, I don't know. Too perfect or something. Too perfect, yeah. The texture doesn't look quite right. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'm going to be fine for the... I'm also probably going to blur them later because they're on the foreground. So now I can use this tool this tool and it'll have some a little weird patches nope that was good i wonder if you could use um content aware fill for that too oh let's try it Oh yeah. Oh. Yep, you were right. Adobe Sensei doing it again. <laughs> hey, this is uh like I would I would forget <laughs> that this thing exists existed. You're like, hey, remember that tool? <laughs> I know, I know that's that's the things that we need Paul here to be telling us about the new ways we can yeah, do yeah, things yeah. in Photoshop, <laughs> get rid of our old school brain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for sure. And same deal. Let's 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 repeat the trick. Boom. Done. Perfect. So good. <laughs> so happy. Photoshop is smart. Um okay. and I'm going to extend my foreground because I know I have quite a bit of it.
um, I probably should. Um, so, so, so as you can see, I just uh, used uh, lasso tool and um, now adding feather to my mask to feather out whatever was happening there. Mm. Yeah, it's not pretty, but it works. Yeah, I think it's so cool how um, any time that I've seen you composite, you really build out these different parts of the image, like really working on the moss here and everything. And many times, like when I composite, I'll sometimes just grab an image, put it in. I'm like, okay, that's my floor. Good enough. And I always get inspired to see how you build each part. Uh, you know, it's, it's cool and all, but I, I sometimes feel I can get lost in this, in, in this whole, um, you know, little details and I just like, you don't need to do that. Like, I, I, I think this is just me sort of having my OCDs. <laughs> I know it's probably a blessing and a curse. You have like very cool, unique things that you've created kind of almost from scratch in a way, but yeah, then you get bogged down in the weeds. Another no pun intended. <laughs> yeah, 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 totally. So I want to find the same spot. Uh, it was good. Yeah, something like this. Yeah. Um, and uh, we would have to match some blur situation, uh, which we will do. Um, and here, um, I actually pretty happy with the mask on the uh, our little fairy uh, theory. I'm just going to um, work on some areas where we have hair and stuff. I wonder if like bringing in some of those fuzzies could be nice. Yeah, that's what we will try to do. So duplicating red channel, pasting it, stuff we did yesterday, um, isolating like this. Burn tool. Um. Maybe can you explain this a little bit for anyone who's watching who isn't familiar? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. So, in order to um, have this hair selection, I um. I'm using one of the channels, so I'm going to my channels and uh, scrolling, scrolling through red, green, and blue, and I'm looking at the channel where the contrast between my hair and the background is the strongest. Um, so in this case, it's a red channel. Then I'm selecting the entire channel with Control A, and I'm copying it with Control C. Then I'm going to my um, regular layers. Um, create a new layer with control V I'm pasting that channel. And then, um, when my, um, channel is pasted here with control L levels, I, um, clamp it. So the background is almost black and the hair is much whiter. Um, and then I'm using, um, a burn and dodge tool to create more separation in here. So I want those little hair still to be present i don't want them to be gone completely but i want this like black and white separation and now when this is done i can grab it as my selection i can come back i can hide it uh come back to my um original uh photo i'm clicking Control h to just hide um the you know 
visualization of my selection. It's still there. It's just hidden with control H. And now with the white brush with white color, I can paint my hair. It's almost, yeah, it's almost invisible. So I actually had to do it like multiple times. It, you see how um, the fuzzy fuzzy oh, yeah, is coming back? Of, yeah. So, um, and with the, uh, with that also, you see some um, other stuff came back, which I'm going to remove with burn tool. And here I can see, um, so burn tool. I hope it made sense. I know it was so many steps and uh, look kind of crazy. Yeah, no, it definitely makes sense. And, and um, also tons of great uh, resources on YouTube for anyone who wants to learn more about the channel masking and separation. Uh, if you want to dive deep into it, um, I believe it's been covered in Adobe Live a couple times too. And it's a really great way for masking hair, trees, any little fine detail that um, Sensei isn't quite picking up or um, something that just like kind of messing up your composite. Yep. I use it almost every time. So. Yeah, me too. I, I find that it just does, I don't know. It just makes everything look really natural. Yeah. I. I like all the artificial selections, like smart selections do a great job on like harder lines, but with the softer lines, like you can get this level of um, refinement by um, just, you know, the with artificial um, search. Yeah. Okay. And um, let's bring some mushrooms back. That's, um, again, I'm, I'm trying to still figure out this perfect mm. composition for my mushrooms. I have to like look back at it. <laughs> I, I, know, I know, I know, that's like, uh, I'm so far away <laughs> from it now. <laughs> I know, sometimes I make it super, super small so I can kind of see, but I, I like the look of them just kind of peeking in as giant mushrooms. Yeah. makes her seem so little but also like one thing to consider uh is um because they're so bright they take away um center of attention mm. um so we have to be smart about it so um, let's also try uh one cool thing so i'm going to hide um I'm going to use adjustment layer here. And we know our light's coming from the left, so we want to maintain that. I'm just uh, painting a little bit of shadows and stuff. And here, uh, let's try and convert it to smart object, filter, blur. Um, and blur gallery, iris blur. I want to see a nice bokeh on my mushrooms. So let's see what can, what can we do. Uh, so. Do you tend to use iris blur the most? Yes, I know the field one probably will be smarter here. So, mm. you know what I'm really missing in Photoshop? What? I'm missing a very good um, blur, which creates very nice bokeh uh, um, thingies. Yeah. I have it. I have it actually in. Uh, um, 
not filled bar, but tilt. Um, I have it in After Effects. Like After Effects ah. can create the best uh, bokeh, and um, it's a plugin called um, Fish Lift or something like that. I use it all the time, um, but uh, it's a plugin. And okay. it also has Z channels. So I can draw mm. a mask and it just just looks so good. And I miss it in Photoshop, like really do miss it. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like that would be something that would be super helpful. It's a really easy way to make bokeh. And for anyone watching, if you have any techniques or know of something that maybe we're missing, let us know. Yes. And the tilt shift is pretty nice. Yeah. Also, I meant to ask you on the um, exposure adjustment layer that you did, it looked like you were using um, the gradient tool to kind of build out your mask. Is that, is that what you Oh mean? yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, the, the, actually, you know, yes, I was using it and I don't like this blur. And it's just like, because we have such sharp moments. Let's, let's just keep it this way. I'm happy with that. Um, okay. Um, so let's start incorporating our little lady here into the scene right now. Obviously, we need all that nice fuzziness on top. So I'm just duplicating my background layer, creating black mask and um, using brush with white. I'll start painting. Um, so Paul said, uh, you do have Boca in blur effects, just add iris, iris blur and it's under tab effects, but also said, I'm not sure how good it is. I think that was kind of what you were doing. I need one. Can you, can you repeat it? So, okay. So, um, in blur effects, go to, um, yeah, go to your blur gallery and then iris blur. And then oh under, I yeah I use it okay, all yeah. the time here yeah under tab effects yeah 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 same okay here. yeah So one thing we obviously will need to um, kind of adjust in this little fairy lady. Um, she's extremely sharp right now. So smart, so sharp. Uh, she's too, <laughs> she's uh, too sharp for her um, environment. Like we can keep um, uh, her this sharp in this area, but uh, her leg area should match in terms of the sharpness with the floor. Um, and for that, I'm going to convert it to a smart object and use my iris blur uh, to make sure that the blur is correct. So um, we go here and let's And then we would have to do the same for the eggshell. Did you ever used to like paint in your blur before the blur gallery came about? I remember putting Gaussian blur on everything and then like masking it out. <laughs> oh gosh, no. <laughs> Maybe I was just weird. Maybe I didn't know how to properly do things, but oh my God, so much like painting to build the effects. I don't know. I never, I actually never had to deal with that. Um, I did use, um, so 
Now with the burn tool, I had this like a little bit of the edge, like see this little edge here. So I'm just picking my mask, burn tool on the shadows and the edge is going away, which is awesome. Um, I used to use uh, lots of, and still actually do, uh, uh, the lens blur where you paint the de 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 depth of field, the black and white mask before. Oh yeah. So uh, that was quite a bit of that. Um, and I'm just applying same blur gallery to my actual. And um, let's paint some shadows. Um, so adjustment layer and making my mask black. I started a whole conversation about <laughs> painting with Gaussian blur. Paul said, I remember doing that. Joshua said, I remember doing that too. Paul said, oh my at the God. time, <laughs> I probably didn't realize how fake it looked. Then Becca said, uh oh, I don't, I didn't realize that was bad. Not bad, Becca. It's all about how you do it and how it works for you and your workflow. <laughs> I sometimes still do it. I'm like, oh, it's in my head. I know how to do this. <laughs> Oh, that's so crazy. How much pain we had to go through before. I know. It's crazy. I know. And then you look back at old work and it's like, oh my God, what was I doing? <laughs> I feel like old work is so, it's it's such a weird dis destination. Sometimes you look at it and like, 10 years ago, I did this. How did I do this in 10, like 10 years ago? I, I, I did not grow at all. This is awful. I have to quit. And sometimes you look at your work 10 years ago, like, oh, can we just erase internet completely? Yep. <laughs> I know, right? It's so true. And sometimes I look at old stuff and I'm like, man, my ideas were really good. Like I was so much more creative back in the day because I wasn't, in this force boxed into the style that I've built for myself. And I wasn't as worried about what my online presence thought of what I was creating, you know? I know, I know. It's, it's, it's weird. Like we, I feel like when you're younger, uh, like when you are a younger artist, you are much freer in your brain, but you have so much more restrictions in your skills. Yep. And then you grow and uh, you have so much more freedom in your skills, but then there are like your restrictions in, in your brain, which you created yourself. Absolutely. I could not agree more. It's really sad. I try to always kind of channel that younger self, younger artist and bring it into my work. And it's very hard to keep that um, criticism brain and the new things out of it or to be like, oh, you know better than to do it this way. Now you've learned more, but maybe the old way actually was more creative or something, you know? Yeah. It's also really hard to like mm, uh, be part of community, be part of like just, yes, community, but also stay yourself, like mm -hmm. how to be inspired, but not be you know, influence too much when you totally. just start doing something because everyone else do that rather than just pursuing your own thing. Yep. Yep. Okay. So I'm getting happier and happier with that. Um, let's uh, make sure we have our black and white. So instantly. You see, I put black and white filter on top and you can see how much things do not match. I'm going to grab my little fairy lady here and adjust it. I'm going to adjust it not with um, curves. I actually going to adjust her with a, a camera raw filter. So I do not lose um, some of the Uh, 
um, sometimes when you use only exposure or curves, you kind of crush your blacks and kind of just muddy, make, make things a little muddier. But um, Camera Raw, I don't know, this filter is just awesome. It's the best. <laughs> it's the best. So, uh, unfortunately, I can't, uh, um, I have to kind of do that and then check with my black and white. Okay, so just so you can see the difference before and after. Mm. Wow. And um, I'm going to still do some curves, but um, like this. So she's incorporated a little more into the, into the scene. And one thing I really like doing, it's crazy. I'm, um, uh, I want like a nicer highlights on her skin and here. And for that, I'm going to create a hue saturation level layer. I'm going to um, create mask, which matches a uh, mask of my character. Um, I'm going to turn off saturation down completely. Uh, I'm going to change it to screen and I'm going to clip curves into my hue saturation and catch my um, highlights. So let's catch them. And I know it's only black and white. We will see. That's interesting. I've never seen that done that way. And now I'm going to group it all in the same group. Create mask. That's just me. Mask and groups, masks and groups. And I'm going to paint it only in some areas. Um, and obviously you can see our egg is too bright. Um, same deal. Let's bring filter, camera raw filter. And I'm going to just copy this filter here. Ah, uh, too much trouble. Just do doing it um, for the this little mm. shell here too. And uh, let's see how it looks without black and white. So um. It looks good, but egg is blue. And you can see it's not uh, right in terms of the lighting. Um, so I'm going to do curves. I'm going to change curves, curves only on color. And I'm going to bring blues down. Blues and greens. And um, I like my camera raw, but uh, I'm also going to erase it for this like little highlight in here. And I'm um, going to grab my, um, this, this, and do sort of the same. Maybe with this time, color balance. And uh, now going back to my fairy. So those are the highlights. Mm. So that in that group, you just have um, the hue and saturation and the curves for the highlight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, it's getting there. I want to bring um, some um, bouncing light, not light, but you know, uh, colors sort of bleed into each other a little bit when they're close. 
Oh yeah. So painting with overlay, cool. Mm -hmm. Oh, smart. Check her out, making a nice little reflection. Just a really, really subtle touch because, you know, it has to be more subtle than this because she's much further. Wow. Um, and um, let's bring that... Um, I know the shadows um, actually like do not fall this way uh, because we have um, so there is no um, drop shadows on the egg from the fairy because the lighting is coming from the left. But there will be some uh, occlusion light, some bounce light. So it's very soft one um, on the egg, and um, I want to bring uh, some grass. Um, on the foreground, I'm doing it here, images, photos, standard content, please. Do you think that um, in doing all the 3D work that you've done, has it really helped you understand lighting? Like you seem to know the reflection on the egg, the bounce light, all of that. So much. You have no idea. Like mm. um, it's actually been so great. Um, um, like when you uh, do 3D, it helps you like when you can when you render it. You can render it by passes. So you have diffuse pass, you have specular pass, you have subsurface scattering pass. And when you put them all together, they form the image. And you just understand the math of the image, how it works and how it comes to life. Um, so yes, 3D is incredibly helpful um, for the... It, it, helped, it helped me a lot. Yeah, that's super interesting. And it's amazing how it gives just such incredible shadows and highlights and reflections and and almost to a point where you can understand it even more than you can in the real world, you know? It I hope so. It's 3D helps for sure. But um I feel like artists who just paint a lot. Um, they probably understand image as well, um, or even more. It's all depend depends on how long did you stare at the actual right. <laughs> life image. So so true. <laughs> so I'm I'm bringing some random grass for the foreground. Hopefully it works because I didn't try it in advance. Let's see. Uh, same channel selection, uh, channel masking I uh, uh, was talking earlier, but here I'm also going to use select. With some smart filter. Don't want any smoothing on it. Mirrored into smart object. I know it looks kind of uh, crazy right now. We'll find a good spot. And... This will be a foreground, so we found it's all good. So I'm just going to cut 
cut it out, uh, make sure that um, it matches in terms of in terms of the uh, color and contrast, and then blur it out, and hopefully it will um, frame our image nicely. Or it will not, and we will not do that. Let's see. So. Uh, let's work it a little bit. Um, okay, just some layers. It's right now too green, so you shift like this, converting it to a smart object and filter blur gallery and fill blur and like this is the like it's it's super blurry mm -hmm. like I'm, i don't need um yeah that definitely helps like bring your eye in yeah Bye, Elizabeth. Thank you for watching. She said, awesome work, Sasha. Hooray. <laughs> so cool that we just came up with an idea on the spot. And now we have this almost finished, beautiful image. Almost finished. Um, just need yeah. a couple also more tweaks. We're getting there. Yeah. And then um, I... So Oh, go ahead. And then I just have to pass it uh, to you for the final camera roll, please. Yes. <laughs> I know that would be so fun. I know that we had like a Photoshop ping pong one time where two artists pass it back and forth. We should do that sometime. Yes. <laughs> that would be super fun. Um, just a reminder to everyone, we have about seven minutes until the artist oh, spotlight. Nice. So yes. That's going to be fun. And uh, don't forget to submit someone in the artist spotlight tab under the chat and uh, submit a friend, family member, yourself, and maybe you'll just see them. Maybe you'll see them appear here on Adobe Live. Oh, I love that. Yeah. This is such a good technique for creating that depth feel. And I, I think many times in my own work, I forget to kind of build the, that dimension. Mm -hmm. This looks really nice. Is it okay that I don't like mushrooms? You don't like mushrooms? I don't know. It feels like here it's, um, maybe, I don't know. Remove them again. Uh, yeah, no, it, it needs something needs to be there for yeah. sure. It's just like, what if you darken them? I think maybe like. Oh, I feel like that looks weird. Just right behind her. That's why. Yeah, I think because it's like coming out of her head. Uh huh. That that's placement. Uh, like. Yeah, Marsha said it's it's the color red that's too bright. Yeah, yep, I agree. So let's mm. okay, we need to wrap it up soon, yes. Yes, you have a, about four minutes till the spotlight. Okay, so. okay, okay. So let's do the final sort of fun stuff. 
Yeah, Sam said the one in the top left might be too in focus for this macro style shot. Maybe that. Uh, we'll just crop it from the end. Yeah. It, everything has to be closer. Yeah, I feel like that definitely helps. I am like racing now. It was no, so, 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 so leisurely, leisurely all this time. And Hey, we can always finish it after the spotlight, but because um, we'll have a little bit of time after that. But maybe we uh, start thinking of a new composite after. It would be a really fast one. Oh, wait. Oh, so we don't have to finish. It's just no, no. Ah, okay, 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 cool. Let's let's not rush then. Or like, what do you think? New composite or um, finishing? We, we will decide later. Yes. Yeah. Let let us know in the chat. Would you all like to see Sasha take more time with this after artist spotlight, or do you want to start a new composite, which we definitely won't finish, but we could at least piece some things together. Let us know your preference. My favorite stuff. Uh. It's like, I love this one. I'm going to make it a little, just super subtle. Yeah, like if I had more time on it, um, I would honestly like make some funny speckles on the egg. I would bring more little grass bits here and there. Um, maybe would think on the composition more. Um, there's definitely uh, may maybe to bring some what what do you call it billowy wisps or whatever the little uh, particles in the air mm. um so there's so much more um to do but also new composition sounds good too whatever you guys decide it looks like we are getting votes in the chat to finish this one and to, oh, cool. uh, okay, cool. to add so lots of detail yes yeah, so that's that's what we will be doing let's do it uh artist spotlight when we have one minute. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> You're like, let's go. <laughs> yeah, I guess my question would be, do you have, do you feel like you're happy with the color correction that you did? It looks like people in oh, the chat would like to know more about color correction. Too, I, was, so. I was, I was in the process of it. So not yet, not happy yet. Okay, cool. Okay. Yeah, and I'd love to see the atmospheric stuff that you're talking about. I think that would be cool. Speckles on the egg, very fun stuff. Yeah, and I, I still want to revise the composition a little bit. I'm not completely happy with that, um, so. Yeah, the, I feel like you can just really keep going oh, and this is, getting so this is, detailed in these images. So cool. It, it is a rabbit hole, sure. Absolutely. Like, uh, you know, see like this little leaves in here, so fine. All right, it is time. Time. The artist spotlight. Cool, <laughs> let's, let's do it. Now I just need to find the link. <laughs> Uh, and, you know, the link is totally lost. I'm so sorry. You have to do that again. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Um, oh, wait, 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 wait. In the I got it. Got it. I got Yay. it. Um, Perfect. Okay. 
Yes. So congratulations, Daya. Uh, hopefully I'm saying that correctly. You are our artist spotlight today and uh, we'll just take a look at things and Sasha, feel free to click on anything that you find intriguing. Um, just so we are seeing some fo photo compositing, I guess. I like how it was just, you know, regular photo and now we're going to oh, some yeah. uh, Lord of the Rings mortar filling. Yes, that's exactly what I was thinking too. <laughs> the Boca, Boca is everywhere. Mm. Yes. Uh, this artist definitely uh, has uh, it's his or her um, color palette. Like, I always respect that. Yeah, that's cool. Some really interesting design work there. I like the effect on that. Yeah. Macro shots. Here they are. Ah. <laughs> uh. And seems like um, some pencil work too. Oh yeah, wow, that's really cool. Yeah, very interesting style to it. Yeah. Definitely lots of macro photography. Cool. Yeah, I like the little beads. They almost look like water droplets. Now I'm kind of thinking about how <laughs> we could incorporate water <laughs> into your piece. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Um, shall we come back? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for submitting your portfolio. And again, don't forget, uh, if you want to submit yourself or a friend for the artist spotlight, click that tab next to the chat. Oh, look at the doggo. Oh, oh I love dogs. Dogs are the Me best. too. I want a pet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we are back uh, to our composite that we're working on. Anyone that might be joining in late or maybe missed a little bit, um, Sasha is continuing to improve on this beautiful image that she created here. And uh, we're just kind of having some fun with it. So if you have suggestions, pop them into the chat and let us know what you want to see. Yep, please. So I just want to see how this looks really quick. Uh, I didn't put the light correctly. It's other side. See, always like, where's the light coming from? I'm so happy we're finishing it. I would be like, you know, thinking about it later if we didn't. <laughs> I know it's so funny because with my ADD, I never finish anything that I start anymore, which is why you haven't all seen any new work from me. <laughs> so this is a good lesson in uh, remembering to finish my work. I get bored halfway through. I'm like, okay, I'm going to make something new. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. And I also feel like, you know, uh, personal work sometimes it's very tough to make because like when you have some other things going on, like client work and uh, some event schedule, and uh, you just like doing personal work is putting yourself out there. And sometimes yeah. it's just too nerve wracking. So yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, I'm going to paint some light, which is for some reason not working because I'm trying to do it with eraser. Don't do it with eraser. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. It's like, I feel like one of the reasons why things didn't work not like didn't work, but wasn't, they weren't right because the, we needed a little bit, um, uh, 
a little bit lighting here and there. And the composition definitely, like I'm going to bring everything closer, like tighter to the, um, uh, to us. Mm. And um, those speckles, let's, uh, let's paint something on that egg. Yeah. So I'm going to pick a color for it first. I'm using a gradient map. And um, what color, what color egg should we go with? I feel like we have such a warm scene. We need something, uh, you know, I love pink, but it just might not. <laughs> uh, I know, might not work for this unless we make the mushrooms like purple or blue or something, but. Huh. Yeah, I feel like we should go with something green and yellow just to. I think so word the but there will will be speckles so yeah i'm like i kind of like hmm. i guess yeah let's see let's see what the speckles look like and then we could change the color too i'm going to paint them First with like a mm. random bigger. I'm like using random brushes from forever ago. I'm like, I don't know what they are. I use them for something, but I guess we're using them now. I know that's so perfect. I never would have thought of, of using those for anything. <laughs> um, Paul said, I just saw your cover for Blood and Moonlight on Instagram today. How did you do the painterly look? I painted it. <laughs> no, it's, uh, you, I, uh, I was like, what? <laughs> no, no, uh, that was, uh, I started with a photo. I started with one of the Adobe stock photos. Um, and uh, actually going to bring it. Um, where was that? So Paul is talking about, uh, about one of those artworks. Oh, th so this was my region. Uh, this was one of the sketches and, uh, wow. um, the final, the final is, I, which I posted was in here. So um, I started with the wow. photo. It's not like I just painted it from zero. I, again, I'm not a painter. Um, and uh, um, yeah, it just, those wines actually, they're 3D too. They're painted over 3D. <laughs> so. So, you, so you painted like a paint texture in 3D? Or? Um, I uh, used smudge tool. So like, for example, if I want to uh, make this uh, into painting, I'm just merging everything. I'm using my smudge tool. I, I, I would have, I would have some, uh, um, you know, mm. outline, which I would have to do to make, but yeah. And, uh, and then was that how you did her hair too? uh that was actually painted a little bit so mm. you, you just c combining lots of different techniques yeah i i really like painterly look i think it's so cool um so i know i love that that's awesome it's funny because i've been um kind of getting into illustration a little bit more and just playing around with things on my ipad and um then the other day I was like, why don't I take my photos and then smudge them or play with them and add the painting look on top? I and know. Like, duh, that's such a great idea. <laughs> For sure. It's kind of, uh, yeah, 100%. That's... Yeah. It's cool because it helps you keep all of those super realistic shadows and highlights, especially if you're not traditionally a painter. Yeah. So I just, um, 
edit my speckles, but I'm going, um, I'm using them as a mask for my, um, again, um, um, gradient map. Gradient map is great for changing colors. So I recommend it. Yeah, and I, I actually like this kind of almost metallic look to them. Yeah. yeah, the speckles are so nice. Such a nice touch. I'm going to adjust, adjust it in here and paint some of it. So we don't want them to bleed on another side like this. So in doing the gradient map the way you did, is that how you get that two-tone look where it almost feels metallic? Yeah, because okay. so um, again, this is kind of cool. This is coming from the mm, from uh, 3D work. The difference between metals and non-metals is the highlight. Like metal highlights are much tighter. So mm. uh, your bla the blacks are darker and your lights, it's uh, uh, sorry, it's like let's say if we will take this egg it will not be perfect but if we tighten in our highlights it will get this almost um metal look to it yeah and if like I'm changing it to luminosity, so it still has this green, but um, with this um, tighter areas of shadows and light, it uh, creates more metal look feeling. So there's like, if we wanted those speckles to be in the same color, but more metal like. And obviously in areas like this, because it's reflected, it would have to be brighter again because it would be reflecting the mm, yeah it, that's super cool would be reflecting the grass and others mm. other thing very interesting i didn't know that with the metal textures and you could really see when you tighten those highlights and shadows that that certainly did look like metal And I wanted to weather them a little bit. And um, <laughs> Paul well, said, this is looking excellent. <laughs> <laughs> good job. <laughs> That's a good one. And I would totally agree. It is looking excellent. <laughs> it's really so cool to see how well it came together and like that reflection of the arm and the little tiny shadow behind her like it looks like she and the egg came together awesome awesome to hear uh let's bring the same gradient maps to our little piece in front which i can't find for the life of me now that's when you know you need to name your layers. <laughs> and that's why I marked the thread. So I just mm. know. Hmm, it's too bright right now. Okay. Um, cool. So one thing I'm not loving about um, the girl, like, 
hope <coughs> color. Oh, that seems that's what I do when I'm stressed. <laughs> I love those reflex responses, right? Oh yeah. That's exactly, I go on my phone, open Instagram. And so I had to set a timer on it because I was just opening it automatically. Oh no, this is like, uh, this was just an update of the game. Seriously, I can, uh, you know, work for like two weeks and then play Sims for a day because I want to build a house of my dreams and ah. that's where I can do that. Yes. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I think I want to, just my filter on her, so I, the camera raw, I'm not happy with that. Mm, that's an interesting idea. So it said, uh, what if some eggshell pieces around her body, some pieces and chips on her legs as if she came out of the egg? Ooh, that's cool. Yeah. I'm like at this point trying to uh, figure out the... Um... Yeah, we, we, we might do that. Um, I'm just trying to marry this entire piece. Yeah. Uh, and we have about 10 minutes left. So whatever you feel is uh, yeah, the we, best we, way to... We need to get to the color, comp uh, the final touches. So... I just want to uh, add green to her too, because uh, because I want to. Do you usually, when you're adding color for something, um, are you usually using a gradient map versus uh, maybe like color balance or something? It depends. Um, if I'm, for example, um, working on the fabric, I use uh, I use gradient map. Um, mm. If it's for the skin tone, obviously skin tone has so many uh, different uh, aspects to it that if you just use one gradient map, it will look monochromic and monochromatic and it's not right. right. Um, so like here, I'm just thinking I maybe want to uh, change her outfit. Maybe we'll see. Kind of. That's cool. It looks like the moss is growing up onto her body. Yeah. So, and uh, maybe a little bit on the wings. Mm. And I'm going to duplicate it again, make mask and some of it on her actual um, Oh, I gotta clip it. You know what I just realized? Mm -hmm. So bad. What? Uh, we have not saved this at all. It's still untitled too. <laughs> <laughs> Where someone is usually Carol, isn't it? You usually telling us to save. Someone is always telling us to save, and uh, we have not uh, saved. We we're bad. <laughs> Oh, that would have been so sad. Guys, don't do what we just did. What I just did about not saving things. You want to save things. Yeah. Oh, the number of times I have been this deep in work and then uh, not saved and had Photoshop crash. 
So yeah. sad. So sad. I'm seriously like I'll I'll, I'll get I'll, I'll get to the whole um, color composite in a second. I just need to uh, finish little things. Yeah, we have uh, about six minutes left. All right. Yeah, Carol said, only as good as autosave is. I know. I wonder if it's autosaving. Okay. Um, let's jump into the... Oh. I'm just like I'm like yeah yes I'm about I'm, I'm about I'm about to about to about to about to. <laughs> uh, okay, we have this. This. Let's bring everything closer to the camera, so find better composition. This is so, so pretty. Oh, I just love the way it's come together. Nice. Um, let's play with camera raw filter. Um, did you keep this green on her skin or did you get rid of it? I got rid of it. Okay. I, it, it could be cool. It just more, I need more time to work on it. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Anna, I need your guidance. <laughs> oh no. Okay. Let's see. Um, pop the, yeah, bring the exposure down a little, maybe pop the highlights a tiny bit. I kind of just play around with things. Uh, bring the exposure up a tiny bit. Um, do you know how to get rid of this um, pre preview of the uh, clamping white? Um, I think it might be up in the histogram. I was having that issue too. Yeah, click on that. Yeah. <gasps> <laughs> I've been struggling with this for quite some time. Oh, good. Okay, glad we could solve that. Um, then I find like the real magic is within um, the uh, radial, I'm like blanking on it, the radial masking and then um, the brush as well. Okay, radial masking. Um, or radial... Uh, radio it? filter. See the little circle on the right hand side? Yep. Mm -hmm. And then I usually put like a nice big mask over my subject and then I will invert it. How do you do that? I'm uh, like, you have the little invert button right below the feather. Yeah. I, I, just like right now. And it's um, the, the, oh, that's weird. Yeah. That is super strange. Hmm. Um, maybe try go to the brush right above, two above the radial filter there on the right hand side. Looks like a little paintbrush uh, over to the right. Oh, to the right. Oh, no sorry. Problem. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Here you go. Thank you. And then um, you can paint onto the canvas i don't know what's happening here yeah that's so weird oh there you go nice okay, okay so now click invert, invert. yeah yes now you can. yeah here you, go. here you go yes yes then that just helps bring everything together and sometimes i like to actually put the circle kind of uh i like to stretch it out almost diagonally too so it it's uh Sorry, I'm more, having a hard time more, speaking. More, more dynamic. <laughs> yeah, and so that it actually matches the light or is opposite of the light. Um, and then we'll kind of like adjust from there. I love that. Um, I'm learning it right now. Yeah. Yeah, that, that really helps. I think that ties. 
I love like doing camera roll at the end because it ties everything together. And I think that helps with the mushroom. Like, oh, so dreamy. Nice. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, one thing I sometimes like to do. Um, and um, this probably needs to be done with a photo, but I just don't have time. Um, I'm going to add a little articles. Mm. Like seriously, this is not uh, brush uh, work. It's like find a good photo and uh, incorporate it there rather than uh, doing what I'm doing right now. But yeah, it this still works though. So. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love it. It came out so incredible. And thank you everyone in the chat for all of your suggestions and ideas. I feel like this just, it came together so amazingly with everyone's input and it was such a fun stream to host. Yeah. So, so fun. Thank yes. you so much guys for great ideas and uh, sticking around. Yeah. Thank you so much, everyone. Stick around for the Illustrator Creative Challenge coming up next with Andrew Hawk Rattle, followed immediately by day two of packaging design for a coffee company with Kevin Kraft. Thank you everyone for for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day and take care. Bye. Bye. -bye.